Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Josh, your humble host of The Gnome Show. I uh, run AGP, American Gnome Production, uh, Productions. Um, and uh, tonight I have a um, horror short film about 14 minutes um, called What It Takes uh, by Bloodscribe Creations. So let's go ahead and give them a like and subscribe. Uh, and we pull them up. And, um, oh, bloody. So I want to let everybody know that I will be streaming um, on Thanksgiving. Um, I'll do um, a live stream type thing like I like, sometimes do and did more in the past. Um, and then I will um, have um, the Gnomish Movie Channel uh, going for the rest of the day. So if anybody wants something to watch, um, I have like a hundred and plus uh, short films uh, for your consideration. Um, that being said, please like, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends. Um, I have all, also have some <clears throat> how-to videos, uh, so, um, a few shorts uh, that might be, uh, you know, to your taste. Um, I mean, the shorts are more experimentation, really. Uh, but I do enjoy doing them sometimes. Um, and then I have a few other videos um, available in the, um, uh, in the, what, what is it? I think it's the, under the Gnome Show, uh, there are a bunch of my streams. Um, come on, focus, man. Mr. Gomi is uh, joining us tonight, being a little weirdo that he is. Nutty buddy. Nutty buddy. So, uh, with that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, and also, um, it was a little while ago, but before. I uh, start, I would like to uh, <clears throat> bring up I would like to thank uh, Joe Baccia Jr. 1414 for your comment um yeah man um i'm having a lot of fun watching uh random short films from across youtube and uh um stay tuned uh and, and please uh make sure you check out uh the gnome uh movie channel playlist there's uh some really really good short films in there uh for you to watch um and a lot of my stuff uh, a lot of the short films are 15 minutes and under. Uh, <clears throat> some of them are, are half an hour, but I really try to keep it in the true short film category. Um, but there are a few like hour long ones that I'm, I plan to do. Um, but there, I might actually like put some like intermission uh, bumpers or something like that in there. We'll see. Um, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, again, uh, thank you, Joe Baccio Jr., for your sub and for um, the short film. It was really good.
bit. Uh, well, is this is this right? Uh, am am I? Are you? I'm here to see Lady Lioncourt. I trust your ride was comfortable, Count Dandridge, 82. Yeah, that's me. I'm at some service you provide. Oh, right, right. Uh, listen to them, the children of the night, what music they make. Oh, yeah, of course. Guess I won't be needing that much anymore, will I? I gotta take that, that little man off. Your interview is in here. Best not to keep them waiting. So there's a little bit of formality going on with the, these guys. A reminder. This is an interview. You will be questioned for viability. You must answer truthfully. They will know if you do not. Trust me. The interview will last as long as it needs to. If you wish to be considered, you cannot leave the room. You cannot leave the chair. You must stay sitting the entire time, no matter what you hear or see or experience. If you leave the chair, you will fail. If you leave the room, you will fail. You are free to fail at any time. Yes, I remember. But trust me, none of that will be the slightest problem. You know, I don't know about anybody else that you've spoken with, but I was born for this. Uh-oh. If there's no one here. She'll join you shortly. Please have a seat. Oh shit. You are hey, down. Do you have any last minute advice? Just be yourself. Oh, I think she'll re All right then. Yeah. I appreciate your patience. I must oh. say you're off to a good start. Yeah? Uh. I mean, yeah. I mean, patience is it's something. Hmm. It, it's important, right? I take it that some of the others, I mean, if you've done this before, took off thinking that this was some kind of a joke. I don't think this is a joke. We became acquainted online, Count Dandridge, 82. Mm. But now that we are no longer interacting digitally, I want to know your substance, essence, who you are. Please, if you will, introduce yourself. Whatever you believe is relevant. Okay, well, um, my name is Vic. Vic Fordham, currently working as an assistant manager at a 24-hour coffee shop called Red Eye. Night shift, of course. Um, I was always a bit of a loner growing up, being an only child. My parents didn't give a shit, which was fine, because I didn't. It's better off being alone. I guess that shows that I was capable and self-sufficient. Um, I read a lot growing up, and there was just always something about vampires that spoke to me. You know, I had been a member of that message board for a long time. And when we first started to talk, I mean, yeah, at first I thought maybe you were just super into role play. So I um, can relate. To this guy was an only child and you have to learn to entertain yourself 
you know, um, keep fucking forgetting to put that down. Um, and yeah, um, the fantasy and horror was a big coping mechanism, um, when I was younger, um, still is, but not as big as it used to be when I was young, like, you know, like when I, when you're in that formative age range where, like, um, a book can, a book can, 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 not only can it, you know, like, take up an entire evening without you knowing it, but, um, there's that old saying, like, you know, when you read a book, you're hallucinating what's on the page, um, I mean, that's not a bad thing, like, you know, like, Anne Rice was a big influence, um, Maybe not the first one. It was too flowery for my uh, for my taste, but definitely the Vampire Lestat and onward, uh, and even and uh, uh, the later novels like uh, with the witches and um, with the giants and all that stuff, uh, like uh, Blackwood Farms and all that. They they those are really good. Um, the Memnock the Devil. Um, <laughs> If you haven't read that one, um, it, that's a really good one. I, uh, I, and and uh, the more humanizing, um, or one of the more humanizing novels for the stat. Um, but vampires, yeah, has always held a fascination for me in all its forms. And there are many different vampires across the spectrum. Um, I. I find some of the eastern varieties of vampires to be far more um, inventive and um, um, terrifying, um, but um, there is something to be said about uh, good old Dracula, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's get on with it. I get that all the time, you know, but you, you were different. She's hungry. I mean, the she is. things you described. I mean, those things that you said, I could sense the honesty. And it just proved what I knew all along. Only those with promise are extended this interview. This chance to prove they have what it takes. <clears throat> I saw that in you. Tell me, Vic, what motivates you? Why are you here? Who wouldn't want to live forever, right? <laughs> That's too easy of an answer. Immortality is about having time. And with time enough, you could do anything. You could become the best. You make the world a better place. Build an empire. I could do all of that. I mean, it is my destiny. I mean, yeah. Sure, you have to spend the day inside, but just think of what you could... Buddy, you're talking to a predator. Let's get this right out there. Like, if, if she's for real, for real, she's still, like, you... Don't be... Don't be cute. Do be what you could learn with just half an eternity. I'm sorry. I'm my passion about this just gets the better of me, but I feel like my whole life has been leading up to this and it's right in front of me. I'm sitting. Is that what your friends would say? That you are passionate, driven, someone who can accomplish great things if given a chance? Like I said, I'm a bit of a loner. I'm not really into making friends, but I bet if you ask Charlie, he would say that. <laughs> he and I used to share the same shit job, <laughs> call center. <laughs> and we used to, we had the same sense of humor. I am sure that if you ask Charlie, 
he would say those things. But I haven't seen him in a minute. It would be unprofessional of me to neglect an applicant's references, of course. I spoke with Mr. Charlie Price, 517 Donvale Lane, just last night. Nice. Yes. He gave me everything I needed. You didn't. I mean, that isn't. <laughs> and if it was, is drinking blood a deal breaker for you? No. A step too far. I mean, that's part of the deal, isn't it? A drink blood, live forever, avoid the sunlight. I mean, that's a... So what type of vampire is she? Is she... <clears throat> is she the beautiful... I mean, like, no. It's not the right answer. It's not the right question. Like, uh... Like, what... Like, are you the the physical blood drinker? Are you the psychic blood drinker? Or are you... Like, what Like what kind of vampire are you? And like, like, really, buddy? Really? Careful what you, what, you, what you wish for, sir. It's all real, right? Oh, yes. It most certainly is. I mean, that's fine. It's great, even. I mean, Charlie really didn't have anything going for him anyways. But I know that part of this new life is cutting ties well, with the, the old one. Is a good, uh, good I have thought this through. Cutting ties will be necessary. Sometimes, forcefully. What are you prepared to do in order to ensure that your new life is secure, protected? Whatever it takes. I'm an only child. So it's really only my mom and dad who may care what happens to me. And now that Charlie's gone, it's just a matter of taking care of them, and then I'm free. So you would be agreeable to eliminating anyone who may want to come looking for you? Yeah. Like I said, no worries there. If you were to become like me, would you prefer to be alone? Or would you require companionship? I don't know. What's normal? <clears throat> like your thrall, your ghoul, your slave who answered the door for me. I'd, I'd want that. I presume my assistant made it clear that lying to me is futile? I haven't lied. I swear. Oh, but you've lied to yourself. You don't want this existence to live your best life, whatever that means. You want this for one reason. Power. I'm sorry. Is that a disqualification? Do you think it should be? I was simply pointing out your lie. And lies are not permitted during this process. Oh. Ah! Holy shit! What the fuck? If you wish to continue the interview, that will be your only warning. I'm not leaving. Can't scare me away. As you wish. We are nearing the end of our time. I have but a few more questions. Fire away. Why should I choose you over all the other qualified applicants? Qualified? <laughs> Listen, this world is full of Mindless idiots going about their pointless lives. I'm not like them. See, I see this world for what it really is. A hunting ground. And I don't have a problem with that. I see it every day. But I am shackled by the limitations of this society. I'm not meant to be here. Not like this. I'm meant to be better. I'm meant to be elevated. <gasps> I would like to say... Then not only was the actor well chosen for this because he looks a little vampiric as it is, and I'm I'm sure that's why they chose him or one of the reasons they chose him for the role because he is a very good actor. Um, but um, 
Yeah, like uh, like even if it's like this is like supposed to be a gradual change, it's very well done. Like I like the whole thing. She's getting more ghoulish, and he so is he. Uh, it's really good. I like this. <laughs> oh, there you are. That was a response from the Vic I thought I was interviewing tonight. What do you think I'm looking for? I don't know. Somebody that's capable of doing the things that... You came here thinking I was searching for someone ready to become a monster. Yeah. Aren't you? You're here because I thought you may already be one. What are you saying? You thought I killed someone. Your only friend. You didn't shed a tear. Nope. You didn't hesitate at the idea of killing anyone who may still care for you. And you believe the girl at the door, Danny, was my slave. You longed to have many of your own. Any decent human would have left that chair. Anyone with a soul would have run far, far away. Good point. I do not wish to create a monster. I wish to find one. This world needs... That's what I'm talking about. That's Nosferatu. Those are like the, um, those are much more capable and terrifying. These are more along the lines, those, um, those Eastern European to Eastern type vampires. Not the, uh, not the beautiful sparkly fuckers. No, the real vampires. Pure monsters. That was fucking good. That's a little... That's that's a slice of vampires right there. I loved it. Excellent. V wow. All right. Um, sound off in the comments, guys. Let me know what you thought. Like, uh, like that's... You, you remember uh, Vampire the Masquerade, the TV show back in the mid-90s? Um, before, like, the, one of the main stars uh, tragically had a, a motorcycle accident. Um, but, um... They had uh, they had that type of vampire on the like the good guys council, um, and he was one of the the Nosferatu like uh, the the real sewer dwellers because they can't hide how they how they look like you know and they're they're like but they're they're fucking they're ferocious and terrifying. Wow, like subscribe and share, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, tell your friends. Um, watch uh watch this with you know some of your favorite vampire lovers it's really good and uh it's only 14 minutes you know um that's a nice little slice have a great night ladies and gentlemen be safe be happy be healthy and i will see you in the next one